Animal manure is a valuable resource on a farm and supplies the soil with both nutrients and organic matter. Before spreading manure on fields, it's important to know the nutrient content in the manure. Based on the nutrient content, a fertilization plan can be made to ensure that the amount to be applied on each field is adjusted to the crop need. A good fertilization plan ensures the manure is effectively used and excess causing losses of nitrogen and phosphorus to water can be avoided. Standard default values for nutrient content can be used. However, chemical and physical properties of manure vary greatly between farms. Therefore, sampling and analyzing of the manure will provide farm-specific information, which can improve utilization of the manure resource. Manure in storage is very heterogeneous, and an appropriate sampling method is crucial for obtaining a representative sample for analysis. The accuracy of manure analysis is only as good as the sample sent to the laboratory. This film provides strategies for sampling of manure from storage. It includes choice of sampling spots, potential equipment to ease sampling, and handling of the sample before reaching the laboratory. Philip Isaacson at Rock Lunder Farm has integrated pig production, with 300 sows in production and 6,000 fatteners leaving the farm per year. Philip, you have a small grisproduction and a slags grisproduction. We produce a lot of milk, because you have 350 sugar in there. We have 300 sugar integrated, and that means that we have 300 sugar in production, and then we have a recruitment of 50 sugar in there. And then we have even a few slaktar, about 6,000 grisar, that are about 120 kilos. And then we have to sell to other colleagues, 1,000 or 1,500 small small grisar. Oh, yeah. Och du sprider gödsel på egna marker? Ja. ja. Hur gör du med gödselprover? Analyserar du din gödsel? Ja, vi tar analyser varje år innan spridning. Och mestadels på våren. I växande gröda. För att få bäst grövupptag. Ja. Och så gör du en växtordningsplan och tar hänsyn till innehållet i din gödsel? Ja. Då beräknar jag varje år. Manure sample can be collected either from storage or from several loads during spreading. Sampling during spreading often gives good accuracy but will not supply data for adjusting immediate fertilizer doses. The results, however, may be used for calculating additional mineral fertilizer quantities. When sampling from storage, it can be a good idea to sample a few weeks before spreading for obtaining analysis results in time. Equipment needed for sampling of slurry is a bucket tied to a rope or, if available, a subsurface slurry sampler that allows collection of a sample from a specific depth below the surface, a rod for pressing down the bucket into the tank, a bucket and a small spade for mixing subsamples into a composite sample, labeled sample containers of approximately one liter, rubber gloves and other personal protection equipment, a cooler with ice or other equipment able to ensure 1 to 5 degrees Celsius sample temperature until analysis. Always use plastic jars or containers for storing manure, as galvanized steel containers can interfere with analysis results. Before sampling, check with the laboratory if they have specific requirements for sample size, packaging and transporting. They may also provide containers. Most important for obtaining a representative slurry sample when sampling from the storage is that the tank is well mixed. 
Slurry and its nutrients are stratified to different layers. The degree and distribution pattern vary between different nutrients. Particularly phosphorus and total nitrogen tends to be high in the top and bottom layer, as it pretty much follows the dry matter content. Mixing is, for example, done with the help of one or several propellers. Approximately two hours is needed depending on the storage facility. On cattle farms, there is often a distinct crust as well as a bottom sediment that needs to be incorporated. At pig farms, the crust is often thinner and it is easier to obtain a distinct circular flow around the whole tank. However, as pig manure very easily sediments, there might be a challenge to get the bottom sediments to mix with the rest. This is why pig manure sometimes is found to have a lower dry matter content and phosphorus content than expected. When the tank is satisfactorily mixed, take out a number of subsamples, each approximately one liter. The more well mixed, the fewer subsamples are needed. If the tank is well mixed, two samples may be enough. For a less well mixed tank, take at least five subsamples at least one meter below the slurry surface and from different parts of the tank. If sampling with a bucket, use the rod to reach at least one meter depth. Combine the subsamples into one large composite sample. Mix thoroughly and take out a final sample of approximately one liter. Do not fill containers more than to three quarters to provide air space for manure gases and to allow for expansion if the containers are frozen. Especially liquid manure can build up pressure very quickly when warm. Seal the final sample immediately and place on ice or in a refrigerator. Sampling liquid manure in lagoons or tanks can be dangerous due to the risk of falling in or being overcome by dangerous gases such as hydrogen sulfide, H2S, and ammonia, NH3. These gases may cause headaches, eye irritation, and even death. For safety reasons, it is recommended at least two people are present when sampling in a lagoon or storage tank. If working alone, or if not mixing of the storage is possible, an alternative is to sample from multiple spreader loads. Distribute the spreader load sampling evenly when emptying the storage unit. It may be necessary to sample up to 10 spreader loads, depending on the size of the storage unit and the possibility of adequate mixing of the tanker. As this sampling method will not supply nutrient content information for immediate spreading, the results of manure analyses from previous years can be used to calculate the current manure application rate. After as good mixing of the tanker as possible, take a 1 litre sample from an upper opening on the tanker or from an outlet opening, for example a hose. Avoid the first volume passing through the hose, as it could contain residues from previous operations. Seal the subsample immediately and keep the sample cool. Repeat for each spreader load to be sampled. After all subsamples are collected, mix them together thoroughly and take out a final sample of approximately one liter. In the same way as for sampling from storage, the final sample should be immediately sealed and put on ice. Collecting a representative sample of solid, semi-solid or deep litter manure is more difficult than sampling slurry due to the heterogeneous nature of such manure and the difficulties in mixing solids compared with liquids. In general, a larger number of subsamples of stored manure are needed in order to obtain a representative final sample for analysis. Equipment needed for sampling is a spade, or preferably a manure fork, a bucket and small spade for mixing subsamples into a composite sample, rubber gloves and other personal protection equipment, a cooler with ice or other equipment able to ensure 1 to 5 degrees Celsius sample temperature until analysis, if available, a solid manure auger or a silage auger for sampling in deeper layers, 
plastic bags of at least 2 litres. Sampling should be done as close to removal of manure from storage for spreading as possible, while still enabling laboratory results in time for fertilizer planning. An auger specifically designed for taking samples from solid manure piles or silage will help in obtaining representative samples. Identify at least five widely dispersed points on the manure stack or litter pile. The sampling points should represent the average moisture content of the manure and include the center of the stack or pile and the edges. Aim at taking samples at varying depths if possible, top, center and bottom. As sampling is time consuming, a balance must be struck between sampling accuracy and the labor required. In general, the larger the storage, the more subsamples should be taken. Slide the solid manure sample into the bucket for the composite sample. After the final subsample is collected, mix all subsamples together thoroughly and take out a final sample of approximately 1 litre. Put the final sample into a labelled plastic bag or a container, seal immediately and put on ice to keep cool until analysis. As for slurry, an alternative sampling method is to sample solid manure during spreading. Subsamples are preferably taken from each spreader load during loading to give an even sampling distribution over the entire bulk of the stored material. If the storage is large, it may be enough to sample every second to fourth load. In case of sampling for research or survey purposes, the accuracy can be ensured by increasing the number of subsamples and also by using sampling equipment specially designed for manure sampling, as for example a manure auger. A sample divider can be useful for obtaining two identical samples. After successfully collecting the samples, make sure containers and plastic bags are tightly sealed to prevent leakage and ammonia losses. Clearly label all samples with a permanent marker, farm name, type of manure, contact information and date and time when the sample was collected. Warm temperatures will promote nutrient conversion, which will change the nutrient content of the sample. Therefore, make sure they keep cool during the whole handling chain. It is recommended to freeze the samples before transport to the laboratory. This will minimize the risk for high temperatures during transport. In case a freezer is not available, make sure the samples are kept in a refrigerator and delivered to the laboratory within a few days. Send samples Monday to Wednesday to ensure they will reach the laboratory before the weekend. The samples should be accompanied by a completed laboratory-specific order form. If this is not available, an order form from the Manure Standards Project platform may be downloaded and used. The following analyses are recommended. Total solids or dry matter content. Total nitrogen. Ammonium nitrogen. Total phosphorus. Total potassium. pH. Total carbon. pH and total carbon are sometimes not included in the standard analysis package and may then be skipped. Remember, the accuracy of manure analysis is only as good as the sample sent to the laboratory. Good luck.